In these last days, God is calling forth His chosen servants through four intense trials that will test the very core of their being. Will your faith remain unshakable when the world around you crumbles into chaos? Can you maintain unwavering patience as everything you've known falls apart, trusting in God's perfect timing? How will you navigate the desolate wilderness of uncertainty, relying solely on divine guidance? And when faced with rejection for standing firm in your righteousness, will you hold fast to your convictions? These tests aren't mere challenges, they're crucibles designed to forge true servants of God, ready to stand in the face of unprecedented adversity. The path is fraught with difficulty, but the rewards are eternal. As we explore these four critical tests, ask yourself, do you have the spiritual fortitude to emerge as one of God's chosen few, prepared to serve Him faithfully during these tests? Each test is a step closer to fulfilling your divine purpose. So stay tuned as we discover how you can navigate these trials and rise to the call of being one of God's chosen ones. Number 1. Test of Faith Faith is a word we hear a lot, but what does it really mean when the stakes are this high? In these last days, faith isn't just about believing. It's about trusting God when everything around you is falling apart. Faith is the cornerstone of our spiritual journey, the bedrock upon which everything else stands. Without faith, it's challenging to navigate the trials and tribulations that come our way. The test of faith is about more than just believing in God during the good times. It's about maintaining that belief even when faced with adversity, doubt, and uncertainty. So what does this test look like? Well, it might start small. Maybe you lose your job or you get a bad health report. Your faith gets tested when you have to trust that God's got a plan, even when you can't see it. But as we get deeper into the last days, the tests are going to get tougher. We're talking about situations where everything you've relied on starts to crumble. Your bank account, your safety, maybe even your freedom. That's when your faith really gets put through the ringer. But here's the good news. As a chosen one, God doesn't expect you to drum up this faith on your own. He gives you the tools to build it. Reading His Word, praying, fellowshipping with other believers, these are your spiritual workouts. They strengthen your faith muscles so you're ready when the big tests come. And let's be real, as a chosen one, sometimes you're going to fail these tests. There will be days when fear gets the better of you, when doubt creeps in. But here's the beautiful thing about God. He doesn't give up on you. Each failure is a chance to learn, to grow stronger. Remember the story of Peter walking on water? He took a few steps of incredible faith, then sank when he got scared. But Jesus didn't let him drown. He pulled Peter up, and you can bet Peter's faith was stronger after that experience. When you face your own tests of faith, remember these lessons. Trust that God's plan is perfect, even if it's not immediately clear to you. Hold on to your faith and let it be your anchor in times of trouble. Surround yourself with a supportive community that shares your beliefs, as they can provide encouragement and strength when your faith is tested. It's also important to be patient with yourself. Faith is not a one-time decision, but a daily commitment. There will be days when you feel strong and confident in your faith, and other days when doubt creeps in. Number two, test of patience. Patience is a virtue, they say, but when you're in the thick of life's struggles, it can feel like an elusive quality. The test of patience is a significant part of serving God, especially in these last days. It's about more than just waiting. It's about maintaining a calm and hopeful heart while you wait, and well, Patience is essential because God's timing is perfect, even if it doesn't align with our own. A perfect biblical example of patience is the story of Joseph, sold into slavery by his brothers, falsely accused and imprisoned. Joseph's life was a series of setbacks and waiting periods. Despite these challenges, he remained patient and faithful. In time, Joseph rose to become the second most powerful man in Egypt, using his position to save many from famine. Joseph's story shows us that God's timing is always right, even when the path seems winding and long. In our own lives, patience is tested in various ways. You might be waiting for a job, a relationship, a healing, or a breakthrough in some area of your life. During these waiting periods, it's crucial to trust that God is working behind the scenes. Patience is not passive. It involves actively trusting God, praying, and continuing to do your part while leaving the results to Him. But the good news is, God's not asking you to drum up this patience on your own. He's offering it as a superpower, a fruit of His Spirit. It's like a spiritual protein shake to bulk up your endurance muscles. So how do you build this kind of patience? Start small. Start by developing a practice of mindfulness and gratitude. 
When you focus on the present moment and appreciate the small blessings in your life, waiting becomes easier. Remember to celebrate small victories and milestones along the way. Keeping a gratitude journal can help shift your perspective and remind you of God's faithfulness. Prayer is also a powerful tool for developing patience. When you pray, express your hopes and fears to God, but also take time to listen. God often speaks to us in the quiet moments, offering reassurance and guidance. Meditate on scriptures that emphasize patience and trust in God's plan. Verses like Isaiah 40, 31, But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint, can provide great comfort and encouragement. Number 3. Test of Wilderness Experience The wilderness experience is one of the most profound tests a chosen one can face. This wilderness isn't about sand and cacti. It's that place where God seems silent, your prayers feel like they're hitting a brick wall, and your spirit is drier than weak old bread. It's where you learn to trust God when He feels a million miles away. The wilderness test challenges you to rely solely on God, stripping away the comforts and distractions of life so you can focus on your faith and resilience. The story of the Israelites wandering in the desert for 40 years wasn't just a journey from one place to another. It was a transformative experience. The Israelites had to depend on God for their daily needs, manna from heaven for food and water from a rock to quench their thirst. This dependence fostered a deeper trust and reliance on God. Similarly, Jesus spent 40 days and nights in the wilderness, fasting and facing temptations from Satan. This period was crucial for him as it prepared him for his public ministry. Despite the hunger and temptations, Jesus remained steadfast, relying on God's word for strength. In your own wilderness experience, you might feel alone and cut off from your usual support systems. This could manifest as a period of intense personal struggle such as a major life transition, a crisis of faith, or a time of profound loss. The key to navigating this test is to embrace the solitude and use it as a time for introspection and spiritual growth. First, acknowledge the pain and difficulty of your wilderness experience. It's okay to feel lost, confused, and even angry. These emotions are part of the process. Pour out your heart to God in prayer, expressing your fears and frustrations. This honest communication can bring you closer to God, reminding you that He is with you even in the darkest times. The wilderness experience is also an opportunity to simplify your life. Without the usual distractions, you can focus on what truly matters. Evaluate your priorities and make adjustments as needed. This might involve letting go of certain activities or relationships that are not conducive to your spiritual growth. It's important to remember that the wilderness experience is temporary, just as the Israelites eventually reached the Promised Land and Jesus emerged from the desert ready to begin his ministry, you too will come out of this period stronger and more resilient. Trust that God has a purpose for this time and that he is preparing you for something greater. Number 4. Test of Rejection for Righteousness The test of rejection for righteousness is one of the most challenging experiences a chosen one can face. Standing firm in your faith and values often means standing apart from the crowd, and this can lead to rejection and isolation. However, this test is crucial in strengthening your character and deepening your commitment to God. But this test isn't for the faint-hearted. It's for those chosen ones ready to stand tall when the world wants to knock them down. It's about choosing God's applause over the world's approval. Consider the story of Daniel in the Bible. Daniel was a man of unwavering faith who refused to compromise his beliefs even when it meant facing a den of lions. Despite the threat to his life, Daniel continued to pray to God openly, knowing that his faithfulness might lead to severe consequences. His commitment to righteousness was rewarded when God miraculously saved him from the lions. Daniel's story reminds us that standing firm in our faith, even in the face of rejection, brings us closer to God and his protection. Another powerful example is that of the early Christians who faced persecution for their faith they were rejected by society, tortured, and even martyred, yet their faith remained unshaken. Their courage and steadfastness were a testament to their profound trust in God. Their stories inspire us to remain committed to our beliefs, even when we face hostility and rejection. Maybe your test looks like being passed over for a promotion because you won't fudge the numbers, or losing friends because you won't join in on the office gossip. 
It could be facing ridicule for living out your faith in a world that thinks Christianity is as outdated as flip phones. But this rejection isn't a dead end. It's a detour to something greater. It's God's way of separating the wheat from the chaff, the real deal from the pretenders. The key is to remain steadfast and not let the fear of rejection sway you from your principles. It is also essential to understand that rejection for righteousness is a sign that you are on the right path. Jesus himself said in Matthew 5.10, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Rejection can be a form of spiritual validation, indicating that your actions align with God's will. This perspective can help you endure the pain of rejection with grace and dignity. Now before we wrap up, here's a question for you. Which of these four tests do you find the most challenging, and how do you prepare yourself to overcome it? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell for amazing videos like this one.